Iron. No, not this kind of iron. I mean, this kind of iron. It's one of the most important minerals for the body. But do you really know how it's working to keep everything inside you running? I'm Katie Braun, product developer at MyProtein. Keep watching to find out more. Iron is in all of our cells, but it's mostly found in our red blood cells. These are responsible for carrying oxygen from our lungs to other organs in the body. Your iron status affects the activity of the heart, liver and muscles, plus the actions of nerve impulses. So you could say it's pretty important. Iron is an essential component of hemoglobin, an erythrocyte, or red blood cell, protein that transfers oxygen from the lungs to the tissues. As a component of myoglobin, another protein that provides oxygen, iron supports muscle material metabolism and healthy connective tissue. There's a range of different foods that you can get iron from, ranging from dark green leafy vegetables like spinach, kale and broccoli, to nuts, whole grains and probably the most obvious source, red meat. But what you might not know is that the type of iron found in these foods can vary. Dietary iron has two main forms, heme and non-heme. Remember I mentioned hemoglobin earlier? Heme is an iron containing compound which forms the non-protein part of hemoglobin. Plants and iron-fortified foods contain non-heme iron only. This form must be solubilized and hydrolyzed before absorption is possible. Hydrochloric acid in the stomach performs this function, but the reaction can also be helped along by ascorbic acid, more commonly known to you and I as vitamin C. Watch our video on vitamin C here. Do you need more iron? With anemia affecting an estimated 25% of the world's population, this mineral is something we should all be clued up on. Too little of this mineral can affect the number of red blood cells in our body, limiting the amounts of oxygen flowing to organs and tissues. Iron deficiency progresses from depletion of iron stores, the mild iron deficiency, to iron deficiency anemia. The symptoms vary and increase in severity, but you might recognize some of them like pale skin, fatigue, dizziness, and weakness. Humans typically lose only small amounts of iron when we go to the toilet or through the gastrointestinal tract and skin. But usually these are only tiny amounts that the body can cope with. However, there are certain groups that are at greater risk of deficiency. Women who bleed monthly through menstruation, particularly if it's abnormally heavy, plus pregnant women due to the drastic increase on red blood cell production in order to sustain the growing baby's needs. This increases pregnant women's requirements for iron, and if this isn't met, the risk of deficiency increases. People who have gastrointestinal disorders such as celiac disease or Crohn's and colitis, as they may be following a restricted diet or experience malabsorption of iron or iron blood loss in the gastrointestinal tract, may be at risk of iron deficiency. The combination of low iron intake and high iron loss can lead to a negative iron balance. It can be tough to get the iron you need per day through diet alone, particularly if you're following a flexitarian diet and not eating some of the richest sources like red meat. And that's where it could be handy to think about taking a daily supplement. Supplements often contain the ferrous variety of iron rather than the ferric variant, since it has a high solubility and is therefore more bioavailable. Simply, it's easier for your body to use. A combination supplement might be particularly helpful. Look out for one which contains vitamin B12 and vitamin A, which can aid iron metabolism metabolism, copper which supports transport of iron around the body, or vitamin C which improves iron absorption. You might even have heard the advice to take your iron supplement with a glass of orange juice exactly for this reason. So can we take too much iron? Simply put, yes. Our body can store surplus iron, so one to watch out for if your consumption from both diet and a supplement combines to exceed the recommended dose. Symptoms like constipation, nausea, or stomach pain can be telltale signs that your iron levels are far too high. So always exercise caution when starting supplements, and remember to consult your doctor if you've got any specific health concerns. So that's it. I hope I've ironed it out for you. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And if you're new here or haven't done it yet, remember to like this video and subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.